Biden's hard-fought victory gave Democrats some reason to celebrate. But some unexpected losses in the House led some to blame the progressive wing of the party and messages like defund the police. Several progressives strongly rebuffed the sentiment. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez blamed the lawsuits on lackluster campaigning. She told the New York Times, if you're not door knocking or on the internet, then you're not running, adding, I just don't see how anyone could make ideological claims when they didn't run a full-fledged campaign. And joining me now is California Congressman Ro Khanna, who successfully won his district and is one of the most outspoken progressives uh, in the Congress. Congressman, thank you so much for being here. You call yourself a progressive capitalist. Where do you fall on this debate? Do you think that uh, moderate folks uh, in in the House Democratic Caucus uh, lost their seats because uh, of defund the police and the existence of AOC in the caucus? Or is it more complicated than that? Well, Zerlina, first we need to celebrate uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's victory. And it was an impressive victory. I mean, flipping five states, having more of the popular vote when all is said and done than even Obama had in 2012. And we had a sort of family toast in uh, in my family. And my mom uh, said to my niece, uh, who's named Maya, uh, now the vice president's sister is going to be named Maya. So you have a role model. So I think it's uh, just such a profound moment for the country uh, that shouldn't get lost with uh, this other discussion. Now, I don't think that the progressives in any way were uh, to blame for the election. If anything, I think the Black Lives Matter movement uh, got record turnout, that activism in Milwaukee, in Philadelphia, in Atlanta. And that's partly part of the coalition that uh, won us the White House. And in terms of that position, I feel like in some ways, a voter that's going to respond to you know, oh, AOC is a socialist, so, you know, this moderate Democrat, insert name here, is also a socialist. Like, a person who is going to be persuaded by that type of attack ad, is that truly a Democratic voter? Is that voter gettable by the Democratic Party? I don't think so. And Joe Biden just showed that it didn't work. I mean, he won Arizona. He won Georgia, red states. It's only Democrats who have this massive victory uh, and are uh, taking away with it with our uh, self-doubt. Uh, you know, the speaker was actually great. Uh, uh, we On the call, I don't think I'm revealing anything. A couple of people said uh, that uh, we need an autopsy. And the speaker said, what do we need an autopsy for? We won. We won a decisive victory. Uh, the Republicans are spinning it as a victory when they lost. I think we need to celebrate. We're, we're going to have plenty of time uh, for differences. Uh, but let's look at the extraordinary achievement. Yeah, I think, it, you know, I feel like we're, you know, people started fighting even before all the final results are in. All the final results are not even in yet. Um, I want to play a portion of AOC's interview with CNN yesterday um, because I think it's helpful to actually hear what she actually said as opposed to what people are claiming she said. If you look at some of these, you know, some of the, the arguments that are being advanced that defund the police hurt or that arguments about socialism hurt, not a single not a single member of Congress that I'm aware of campaigned on socialism or defunding the police in this general election. Every single swing seat member that co-sponsored Medicare for All won their re-election. Right. And so the conversation's a little bit deeper than that, than, than just saying, you know, anything progressive is toxic. And in terms of looking deeper into, you know, some of the things that campaigns can do better in the future on the Democratic side, um, what's your view on sort of the digital presence and some of the messaging um, that you think could work, um, you know, in moderate districts and maybe even in prog progressive districts? I don't think it's, you know, one message for everyone. It, it needs to be tailored. How do, you, how do you think that can be done in a more effective way? So first, I think we should start with the principle that the exit polls showed. I mean, Fox News has exit polls, that there's overwhelming support in this country for Medicare for all, for government provided health care. There's overwhelming support for having new clean tech jobs, overwhelming support for a $15 minimum wage. In fact, Florida voted for it. But I think what we need to do is understand we have trust to build. There's still a lot of people, too many, uh, in my view, who voted for Donald Trump. We have to earn that trust. And that is, I think, not just digitally, but doing the hard work of going to these communities, listening to people's concerns, uh, sharing our vision, and slowly and 
conversations, building trust and building support for our policies. And I, I think that should be the conversation. How do we build support and trust for our policies as opposed to attacking each other over sloganeering? That's a good point in terms of the idea that if you can persuade people on the substance, um, they may not necessarily be so persuadable um, by uh, attacks on uh, progressive positions establishments um, like the Democratic Party, all the studies show, prefer a moderate, to your point. And in some, some ways, that's seen as like a safer candidate. You know, people said that about Joe Biden during the Democratic primary. As we, as, you know, we as a country move forward into this new era, on the Democratic side, how, how, do, uh, how does the party break out of the mold uh, that they're just going to go with the safe, quote unquote, choice? which always somehow ends up being a moderate on the political spectrum. Well, this time, obviously, there was wisdom to the primary process in that you can't argue with success. And I think Donald Trump was such an mm -hmm. existential threat uh, that people felt that Vice President Biden, with all of his experience and his branding, uh, would be able to defeat him. And, and he did. Uh, but the issues haven't gone away. The fact that we have an entire millennial generation that is growing up with extraordinary debt, that can't afford a house, uh, where we have many working class families who can't make ends meet, uh, whose wages are stagnating, uh, that fact that we still are in all these foreign wars and people don't have health care, these issues aren't going away. And people in this country are crying for change. They, they keep crying. They've been crying for change since President Obama. So I think at some point we're going to have to deliver. And that moment for us is now, and which is why the Georgia races are so critical to being able to do that. Absolutely. In terms of the runoffs, that's going to be um, the Senate majority is at stake. Uh, the Democratic Party in this moment is obviously a big tent. I think that's what happens in a big tent is there are lively debates. AOC and Rashida Tlaib, um, you know, should be able to identify as democratic socialists without that being the brand for the entire party. Um, but that's ultimately what happens, especially as, uh, you know, attack ads pop up in late, late phases of the race. How can the, how can uh, the Democratic Party unite around common uh, policy uh, goals and a common vision with the diverse coalition that they have? No, well, I think a common goal should be good paying jobs and good paying jobs in every community. That's something that members in all districts want. But I think it's important to step back and think about how hard it is what America is trying to do. We're trying to become a multiracial, multiethnic democracy. It's never been done in the history of the world. We have a 60% white population. Compare that to Canada, it's almost 87% white. Britain, 87% white. Australia, 80 some percent white. It's not easy to, to do what we're doing. And I love the fact that we have Abigail Spanberger and Rashida Tlaib and uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Vicente Gonzalez all in our uh, caucus. That's the true messiness of American democracy. And let's have these honest conversations as opposed to in, on, on the Republican side uh, where you sort of have talking points and marching orders. I think we should have these difficult conversations to help this country come together around what a, a truly pluralistic democracy looks like. Should we keep you in mind for the open Senate seat that's going to pop up soon in California? I hope it will be a progressive. Obviously, I uh, keep all uh, my options open to have a big voice. But if there is someone like a Barbara Lee or a Karen Bass or someone who has bold progressive policies, that's what I think reflects uh, the spirit of California. Well, we'll see what happens. I mean, there are a lot of names, including yours, um, that have come up for discussion. So that'll be an interesting uh, thing to see unfold in the coming months. Congressman Rokana, thank you so much for being here, as always, and stay safe.